Hello, this is the PowerPoint presentation for the Airspace 1201 carbon monoxide and methane monitor. The purpose of this training PowerPoint is going to be to introduce all members, including company officers, to the new two gas monitor that's going to be replacing the older single gas carbon monoxide or CO monitor that we currently carry on engines. The goals of this PowerPoint are going to be three. First, we're going to review the properties and characteristics of both carbon monoxide and methane gas. We're going to also talk about the basic operational features of the Airspace 1201 monitor. And then lastly, we're going to talk about and discuss the alarm settings. And the alarm settings have both an audio and a visual capabilities. And we're going to talk about the appropriate response actions. So let's talk about first the properties and characteristics of carbon monoxide or CO. It is colorless, it is odorless, tasteless, and I want to stop here for a moment and talk about that. Since we can't see it, taste it, or smell it, we have to have some way in which to uh, determine if carbon monoxide or CO is present in the area that we're monitoring in. And so that's why we need a monitor to do that. So let's move on. It is also flammable. It is toxic and poisonous to the body. And keep that in mind as far as your PPE, which we'll get into later, the PPE that you're going to need to wear and don when you're monitoring with this airspace gas monitor. So how is carbon monoxide produced? Well, it's produced by being a byproduct of incomplete combustion of some fuels, of which wood is just one. And it is given off as a gas by this incomplete combustion. So one of the characteristics also of carbon monoxide is that it's slightly lighter than air, but understand that it's such a minute difference that it's really gonna diffuse very evenly throughout a structure from the floor to the ceiling. So anywhere that you're in a structure, an enclosed structure, where you think carbon monoxide will be, it will be fairly consistent throughout the structure. Although we understand that we're going to find higher concentrations near the source of the leak. For example, a gas water heater or a gas heater. If that is the source of the, the leak that's given off the carbon monoxide, we're going to obviously have higher readings when we get closer to that source. But as it goes out into the structure, it's going to be evenly dispersed throughout the structure from floor to ceiling. So let's talk about signs and symptoms of carbon monoxide exposure. And keep in mind, you can have a person that is just has a mild exposure, a moderate exposure, even perhaps a, a, a gross or, or heavy exposure to carbon monoxide. So people who have been exposed to carbon monoxide may have varying, they may have all of these following signs and symptoms, or they may have just one or two. Depends upon how long they were in the structure, what kind of medical problems or history they may have. So just keep that in mind when you have people that state they have been in that carbon monoxide rich environment. So let's talk about signs and symptoms. They could be complaining of dizziness, weakness, upset stomach. Uh, they could be having some vomiting when you get there or while they're with you. They could be complaining of chest pain. And also keep in mind they could have varying levels of altered levels of consciousness or LOC. Anything from just mild confusion to being very lethargic to even unconscious upon your arrival. So let's talk about properties and characteristics of methane gas. And just like carbon monoxide, methane gas has some very similar properties, but there are some differences that we need to discuss. Just like carbon monoxide, it is also colorless, odorless, and tasteless. One thing that is significant about methane is that it is significantly lighter than air. Therefore, when we go into a structure, we should anticipate that we're going to find methane gas at higher levels when we get up into a higher into a structure. It is also flammable, and it's also a major component in natural gas. One thing I want to point out about this monitor that is different is that this monitor has a maximum range of monitoring up to 5,000 ppm and that stands for parts per million. Now, if you're, monitor, if you're in a situation and your monitor is reading 5,000 parts per million of methane, I need you to understand that you are at 10% of the LEL. And as you'll recall, the LEL is the lower explosive limit. 
This is the maximum reading of the instrument and should be a turnaround point for you and your company to turn around and go back because you are approaching a dangerous situation. So let's talk about signs and symptoms of methane exposure. There are several on this list that you'll see that are very similar to carbon monoxide, such as having a headache, the nausea, vomiting, altered levels of consciousness, and again, that could be anything from just being slightly confused to lethargic to unconscious. They could have some blurred vision. Most likely, they will have an increased heart rate or be tachycardic. And there could be some mental agitation. And that goes back to the altered level of consciousness a little bit, but they could be just an agitation that would not be normal for that person. So let's talk about some other flammable gases that the airspace monitor can detect. The other gases that can be sensed with this monitor are propane, gasoline vapors, acetylene, benzene, and toluene. And keep in mind that this monitor is calibrated to methane, so the numerical readings that you see will only be accurate for methane. Now that's not to say that you may, not, you may be in a an environment where there is, for example, propane or benzene or acetylene gas, but you don't know that. All you know is that you're going to have the audio portion of the monitor that is in alarm mode, but you're unsure if that is example, for example, again, propane, acetylene, or maybe a benzene. So when you see the digital readout, that is only accurate for methane. Again, while it sees or senses other gases, the numerical values are not accurate because again, it is calibrated to methane. So it's only really looking for methane and will display that on the screen. So let's talk about personal protective equipment and a couple points. Anytime that you are monitoring for any reports of a smell of natural gas or any kind of strange smell, you should be in full turnout gear or bunker gear, including using your SCBA. When you enter a structure, understand that conditions can deteriorate rapidly just as they can in a structure fire. And therefore, therefore that creates that need for us to have all of our gear on and being utilized. We're going to move on now to the operational features of the airspace monitor. First, let's talk about the on and off switch. How do you turn this on? You'll see in the picture here, the on-off switch, as you have the monitor and looking at the face of the monitor, the on-off switch is going to be located on the right side of the unit. It's simply a toggle switch that you push from into the up position or the on position. You'll also notice in the picture that there's also a indicator light called the low battery visual indicator light. And this will light up when the batteries need to be replaced. And we'll talk about what types of batteries and what kind of maintenance that you can do as a member with this monitor later on. Let's talk about the battery compartment. This unit is powered by two AA batteries and the battery compartment is on the bottom of the unit. So when you look at the bottom of the unit, you must open it using a screwdriver and that's what the manufacturer recommends is only a screwdriver. So please make sure that you open that and make sure the batteries are inserted in the correct orientation. For example, the positive and the negative poles on the battery. And when you open the unit up, you're going to see which there's going to be a, a tab in there or a sticker that will actually show you which direction to put the batteries. And very important, this unit must be turned on daily to ensure that it's operational. And this is usually done during your morning inventory checks of all your equipment. So make sure that this unit is turned on daily because when you turn it on, it's going to go through an operational check, which we'll get to in a moment. So when you start the unit up, it'll go through a series of self tests and all this is normal for any monitor that we use. The unit's going to go through a visual sequence of its lights. It may go from red to yellow to green and that is all normal. You're also going to hear an audible beep that's going to confirm that the audible, that the audible signal and the indicator is functioning and all this is normal. And the reason that we want both audio and visual in a monitor is that we may be in an environment that's for example, loud, whether it be some external noise or talking amongst company members, things like that. And we might miss that audible beat, but we can certainly see the light indicators. Again, the red, the yellow, and the green that will help us determine if we're going from an, a safe environment into a more toxic or dangerous environment. 
So when you start the unit up, we've already talked about the light sequences, the green, the yellow, and the red. When you see a green flashing status light, it will flash and let you know that the unit is ready to monitor and that it's functioning properly. This is very important to make sure before you go into any environment or begin any monitoring that you have that green light that's flashing to let you know that the unit has gone through its operational test and has passed and is ready to be used to monitor. Therefore, that's why we recommend that you conduct your startup and turn the unit on and conduct all your checks prior to going into an, an area or a structure. This area that you start this unit up in should be well ventilated and in a safe area and not in a contaminated environment. So again, to repeat, start this up in an area that's well ventilated in a safe environment and then we move into perhaps a more contaminated environment. All right, let's look at the LCD display screen. So as you look at the front of the monitor, on the upper left-hand side, you're gonna see an LCD display screen. If you go straight across towards the right side of the instrument, you're gonna see a button that's called the alarm silence and backlight button. If you press this button briefly, it's gonna activate a backlight for 30 seconds, and that'll be important, obviously, in a low light condition where you need to see what that digital readout is. The LCD screen is gonna to toggle back and forth between and have the terms on the right side of the LCD screen that'll say CO for carbon monoxide and CH4. And I haven't mentioned this previously, but CH4 is the reading for methane. So when you see the words or the letter CO in the LCD screen, whatever number is in there, that is your reading for carbon monoxide. When it goes into CH4 and you see the CH4 on the LCD screen, that is telling you what the methane reading is. And it goes back and forth so you can see both what the carbon monoxide and the methane readings are. Tips on monitoring. There are several tips on monitoring when you're going inside of a structure. We've already discussed about methane being significantly lighter than air, and therefore when you go into a structure, say a single-story structure, understand that towards the ceiling, if methane is, is in the structure, it's going to be higher at the ceiling level than it will be at, say, mid-level, waist-high, or even a lower level towards the floor. Methane has that tendency to be, again, because it is lighter than air, it will rise in a structure. So if we go into a two-story structure, it stands to reason that we're going to find, if methane is, is in that structure, we're going to find higher levels of methane on that second floor because methane rises. The monitoring also has a sampling rate of every four seconds. So let me talk about that for a moment. What that means is that a sample is going to be drawn into the monitor and analyzed every four seconds. And the LCD display screen will show what that reading is approximately four seconds later. So what does that mean to, the, to you as the user of this instrument? What that means is when you're monitoring, you need to slow down. Don't walk at a normal pace through a structure or in any environment that you're monitoring. You have to give time for the monitor to draw the sample in, the air sample, analyze it, and give you a reading. Now that might dictate that you're in an area longer, but you're doing it safer, and that is key. Let's talk about alarm levels and indications. And what we're really talking about is the audible alarm rate, or what we hear, and what that means as far as in gas levels or parts per million of carbon monoxide. If you see a red indicator light on your monitor, that indicates that you are in an environment and it's sensing carbon monoxide, or CO. Now, at the audible alarm, so now we're hearing this alarm go off, if it beeps every five seconds, we know that we're in an environment of at least 10 to 34 parts per million. And to know exactly if we're at 10 or 20 parts per million, we have to look at the LCD screen. But when you hear that audible beep every five seconds, you know you're in at least 10 to 34 parts per million. If that audible rate increases to beeping every one second, now obviously we've increased and we're in an environment of 35 to 99 parts per million. So I want you to see how this steps up and increases as we go into a more toxic or dangerous environment. If the alarm goes into just a steady audible alarm mode, which means it just will not cut off, that should be an indication and it will tell you that you're at least 100 parts per million. 
So again, to recap, if you have a red light indicator, that lets you know that you're in an environment that is sensing carbon monoxide. And based upon the beep at five seconds, one second, or a steady rate, that you're increasing in the amount of PPMs or parts per million of carbon monoxide. Let's move on to methane. If you see an orange light come on your monitor, orange is for methane. If it beeps two times per second, you are above 5,000 PPMs. So, you'll also notice if you turn the monitor over on the back side, this same table is displayed on the back of the monitor or the unit to assist you in how to quickly interpret this alarm. And this is a, a great tool to use if you forget this, this chart. Remember, the visual alarms, carbon monoxide is red and methane is orange. As you look at this picture, let's talk about a switch called the multi-purpose motion switch. It's the same switch that also will, when you push it on the right side of the unit, it will also display and illuminate the LCD screen. When you get an alarm, an audio alarm, you can silence that and acknowledge it by simply pressing once that multi-purpose motion switch. That way you don't have to continuously listen to the audible. If you go into a higher mode, where it would go from every five seconds to every second or into a steady state, then it will override that and come back on. But you can silence that alarm in it, or what we call acknowledge that alarm by pressing this multi-purpose motion switch, again, located on the right side of the face of the unit. All right, troubleshooting. Let's say you're at the station and you feel like this monitor or you're actually on scene of an incident and you feel like this monitor is not operating correctly, this is what we recommend you do. First, get back to an, an environment that is safe and that is what we call clean or clear. I want you to shut down the monitor by simply turning it off with the, on the right hand side of the unit, you'll have the toggle switch, the on off, just simply shut it down, wait about 10 to 15 seconds and turn the unit back on and restart it. It should go back into, go through its normal operational settings, its test, and go hopefully back into a monitoring mode with the green light appearing. If you have the letters ERR that appear in the LCD display screen, I want you to understand that your unit is not gonna work. It's not considered reliable, and it should be taken out of service. Again, if you have the words ERR in the display screen, the unit is not reliable, and therefore should not be used. One other point should be made. On the left side of the unit, you'll notice a small sticker, and that sticker says warranty void if removed. And this is very important that you not remove this. Removing this sticker voids the warranty from the manufacturer. So in the event that we should ever have that ERR appear in that display screen, which is a fatal error of the unit, we can take that back to the manufacturer for either replacement or repair. But if that sticker is removed, the warranty is voided. So at no time should we ever remove this sticker. Let's talk about maintenance of this monitor. Maintenance is relatively low for this unit, but some things we want to discuss. In the event that the unit becomes contaminated, for example, contamination meaning it has soot on it from a structure fire or that it has any, it gets anything on it. One, don't use isopropyl alcohol or alcohol preps or ammonia-based cleaners to disinfect this unit. Because what happens is that the vapors given off the alcohol or the ammonia can harm or damage the monitor itself. This also, as far as ammonia-based cleaners, would include some kind of a window cleaner. Again, anything that contains ammonia. What we recommend is that you simply take a cloth or paper towel and damp it with water and just simply wipe the unit down as best you can. Make sure that you never submerge this unit in water or any other kind of liquid. In the event that it accidentally should happen to fall into a liquid or any kind of liquid, then obviously we need to take this unit out of service and notify the assistant hazmat coordinator. If you feel this unit needs further cleaning, we want you to notify 835, which is the hazmat assistant manager. So in conclusion, a couple of points I wanna make. One, this monitor needs to be started every morning at your inventory checks to make sure that it's operating properly. Just like you would check any other piece of electronic equipment to make sure it works, 
there is an accompanying operation manual that you'll be receiving. It's in a small plastic bag. I urge you to read that because it has some simple maintenance and troubleshooting tips that we've already discussed. But in case you forget that, it's always good to keep that operation manual near or with the unit for any kind of further instructions. Very important, remember that methane, or CH4, if you have that methane reading of 5,000 parts per million, that is equal to 10% of the lower explosive limit. That should alert you that you're in a dangerous situation and you need to take appropriate actions. And when you do get an alarm, whether that's an audio or a visual alarm, there is a table on the back of the unit itself that will assist you in determining and interpreting what those results and those lights and those beeps mean. If you should have any other questions or concerns, direct them to the Assistant Hazmat Coordinator. This is currently being occupied by Lieutenant Ray Thomason and his phone number is 214-670-8249.